The time has almost come. That's right, the MLB trade deadline is days away. We know there's gonna be a flurry of activity, a lot of players changing uniforms. What about those prospects who now will get a shot because their path to playing time has opened? I'm gonna give you 10 prospects in under 10 minutes that you should go out and stash now in fantasy if you can, because they are gonna be much more valuable after the trade deadline. Now let's start with the guy that I'm the highest on. And if you watch my video, few weeks ago about which prospect could be the next big thing, the next Ellie De La Cruz. Well, spoiler alert, it's Ronnie Mauricio of the New York Mets. I don't know if the Mets have officially waved the white flag and declared themselves sellers, but when you hear that Justin Verlander and Max Scherzer are on the block and you look at the record, it just makes sense. But you know what? Even if those guys don't go, at the very least, you figure a guy like Tommy Pham should be on the move. So that means there's going to be a path for Mauricio. Why not go full-fledged youth movement? You've seen Francisco Alvarez. We've seen Brett Beatty. We've seen Mark Vientos. With the way Mauricio is hitting and all his talent, it's a good bet we see him before the season is over. This guy has power speed and he's hit for average. Answered a lot of the questions about his eye and his plate discipline in AAA. While some of these prospects I'm going to talk about might only be feasible to stash if you have an NA spot or a deep bench, Mauricio I think is worth adding just to have him in case he gets the call. Next, we're going to talk about a guy who could get the call any day now because this is a trade that has already happened. For reasons still unexplained, Cleveland decided they're going to give away Ahmed Rosario to the Dodgers to get back Noah Syndergaard. I can't even call him Thor anymore the way he's pitching these days. It's just Noah Syndergaard. But that clears up a spot for Rokio, who is on a tear, coming off a 16-game hit streak where he's hitting 379 during that stretch. That brings his season average in the minors to 298. Now, he did get uh, not even a cup of coffee, I guess a couple of sips earlier in the season, uh, about four games worth. Don't take anything away from that. He could be the everyday shortstop for the Guardians going forward. Right now, they've been trying out Gabriel Arias, who's hitting about... 188. If Cleveland is serious about contending, they're going to need offense, and this is someone who can provide that. Now, he's not going to give you a lot of power. He's more hit tool over power. Got decent speed, but not exactly a thief. But Rokio's average is the calling card here, and the path to playing time on a decent offense is pretty good. All right, it's been too long since we've talked about a Reds prospect, so here we go. Noel V. Marte, who I also mentioned in that prospect video a couple of weeks ago. He's a red, he's an infielder, high-end prospect who saw a little bit of the luster kind of fade the last couple of years, but now it's back. Was promoted to AAA not that long ago, and all he's done since then is hit 329 in 76 at-bats. You might think there's no more room for any more infield prospects in Cincinnati, but now we're hearing rumors Jonathan India might get traded. I'm not convinced that's going to happen, but you never know. And if they just go full youth movement and they decide that they get an offer that they can't turn down, Marte all of a sudden has a path to a job every day at second base. Or McLean plays second base and then he goes to short, but then Ellie De La Cruz is at third. Like It doesn't matter. Marte has tools. Cincinnati, obviously doing something right with the young hitters. If he gets the call, you're going to want him. Another team that does pretty well with young players is Tampa Bay. Well, the one that I think we might need to look at, not because he's going to get called up again for the Rays, but because I kind of hope he gets traded, is Jonathan Aranda. We did see him come up right before the All-Star break and then get sent back down. Look, this is a player who has had a little bit of time in Tampa and has not done well, but that's okay. It's a small sample. Let's focus on what he's done in the minors. For the Durham Bulls, how about hitting 347 with 17 home runs and 67 RBIs this season alone? Now, what's better for fantasy purposes? Right now, if you look on Yahoo, he qualifies at first, second, and third base. He'll probably benefit from a trade somewhere else because just not a path to clear playing time in Tampa. And he obviously hasn't done well there when he has gotten the call. But obviously this is a team that should be a buyer at the deadline. If he goes somewhere that he can just immediately step into the lineup, you're gonna want him. Another player where I'm really hoping a trade gets made where he gets out. Not that I wish he wasn't in the Dodgers lineup, but there's just not room for him. So Michael Bush needs a change of scenery. Like Aranda, he was also up earlier in the season just for a little bit before getting sent back down. He's got nothing else to prove at AAA. Hitting 307 with 15 home runs and 59 RBIs 
at Oklahoma City so far this year. This guy is 25 years old. He is major league ready, just needs the regular at-bats. And the Dodgers just got Ahmed Rosario, as I mentioned, and Kike Hernandez. I mean, it's pretty clear, obviously they're going to be contenders and buyers like always, but also they're going with some veteran presence at the middle infield spot and everywhere in their lineup. Bush is someone who could easily be dangled in a trade if they're going after a big fish and starting pitcher or somewhere else. He's the number two prospect in their farm system. He's clearly ready to contribute. So hoping a deal gets made and he goes somewhere good. And then we're talking buyers potentially. You know the Yankees are in the mix. So let me start with this. Not even just because they're in the trade market, but, but the Yankees now need help a catcher because Jose Trevino is out for the season with a wrist injury. Kyle Higashoka is probably the starter now. I mean, good defensively, but he's a career 204 hitter. And the backup, Ben Rortvet, despite looking like the Hulk, uh, he's not much better. In fact, his batting average is worse and doesn't feel like he's the answer for a team that wants to make a run. Well, instead of going after someone, you know, in the trade market, it could be that they just look down to Austin Wells in the minors. Wells is a more offensive-minded catcher, I mean, the Yankees, if you noticed, have been going with a lot of youth this year, giving a lot of their guys a chance. You know, some have panned out, some have not. It feels like Wells might be a go-to option unless they do make a move at catcher. But, I mean, really, there's not that many options out there. So I would take a deep look at him, especially in a two-catcher league, somewhat to either monitor or stash if you can possibly do that. And if the Yankees are going to go with youth, well, why not look at Everson Pereira, who's their number two prospect? This guy has 60 grade raw power, but he's also hitting for average. In fact, hitting 345 at AAA. Now, this feels a little more like a stretch because Aaron Judge is now back and Stanton is so far healthy. Uh, they got Harrison Bader, so you feel like he might just be a utility guy or bench bat. But look, this entire offense and especially the outfield, injuries are happening, right? They definitely could happen again. And Pereira could definitely make an impact. He is on the 40-man roster too, so a good chance he gets a look at some point. How about another power-hitting outfield prospect? This time, let's go to a seller, and that would be the Detroit Tigers. Could we see Parker Meadows up this season? This guy's a 6'5 left-handed hitter with a huge power stroke. He's also on their 40-man roster. I mean, the Tigers, they have nothing to lose at this point. Uh, besides more games, but to give their guys a chance, Meadows has made a strong case, hitting well in the minors. There was some concern that he had too long of a swing, might have some strikeout issues, but he hasn't really done that. Only 23.7% K rate right now, he has 14 home runs and 12 steals, so there is a little bit of a power speed combo here as well, not just a slugger. So Meadows, definitely somebody worth taking a hard look at. And then it still feels weird to say the Cardinals are gonna be big time sellers this year. Now, as far as who's getting traded, uh, well, right now it looks like Tyler O'Neill will not be going, but Paul DeJong is almost surely gonna be dangled out there. I mean, he's at least got some value. They're gonna trade him away. And so that could clear a path for a guy like Mason Wynn. Wynn did struggle a little bit early on. He's somebody who has not the best play discipline, but he's got a lot of tools, a great arm. He's got speed and a little bit of pop. Well, he struggled early, but since July 8th, he's hitting 457. That includes 12 extra base hits, and he has 16 steals on the season so far. Might be hard to trust another Cardinals prospect at this point, but hey, Wynn should get a look toward the end of the year in your NL only or keeper leagues. I would definitely have him on my radar. And then this last prospect I'm gonna throw out here, somebody I wanna give a shout out to one of our Endgame community members who asked about Sidon Rafaela, who was definitely not on my radar until just now. This is a smaller, speedy, kind of a glove first prospect for the Boston Red Sox. He had 294 at AA and now 305 in his time since moving up to AAA. So he doesn't have the best approach. I mean, this guy does not like to take a walk. He swings at basically everything, 
But so far, he's gotten away with it. It doesn't seem like there's an obvious opening in the outfield for Boston right now. They did just deal away Kike Hernandez, and it looks like Adam Duvall is on the move. He could at least fill that fourth outfield utility role. And this guy has played some infield, so it'll be interesting to see if they just try to fit him in somewhere. Is there a prospect that you've got your eye on that you're looking for that maybe will make a splash later this season? If so, drop a comment and let me know who it is. While those are some young players I'm stashing, don't forget, make those crucial waiver wire moves. These are some players worth adding before that trade deadline hits.